Mom's Hot Seat, a new show where you're going to get an up-close and personal look at some of our teams and student-athletes. I'm your host, Karen Torsha, and I've got with me today my illustrious co-host, Mr. Jeff Jones from the men's basketball team. And we're going to be giving you a glimpse today of the Ryder Field Hockey Team, the reigning two-time Northeast Conference champions and also the 2010 Conference Tournament champions. Joining us today on the bronze seat, we have our seniors, Virginia Eguizquiza, Meg Paisani, Rebecca Lotito, and Natasha Tukiba. Close enough? Yeah. Is that good? All right, good. <laughs> so I promise this isn't going to be very painful at all, so uh, we're just going to talk about the team and its success this year. Mr. Jones is going to have a little quick rapid fire questions for you, and we're going to have a little fun today. Can we oh, handle that? All right. All right, so. So, Rogers Field Hockey Team, for those of you that are watching and don't know, we're picked the conference favorite in the preseason polls and are currently on a five-game winning streak and have a record of 9-1 and one going into this weekend's games against uh, Sienna and Bryant. And those will be their first conference games of the season. So, V, we are going to start with you. Okay, so there's a bit of a target on the team's back since you guys have gone undefeated in the conference for the last two years. What do you think is going to be the key to this team this year winning the NEC regular season title and the conference tournament championship again? Well, I think that um, what we need to do is play the right way, which is has an element of feel. The other teams always um, want to um, beat us really badly. I don't know why. So they go really hard on us, but we just need to go hard on them. Um, and also for the conference, we really need to be ready for it. We can't. Now, since you've been at Ryder, you've been named the NEC Rookie of the Year, and now you're the two-time Player of the Year. You were named that as a, as a sophomore and your junior year. Uh, and you're, you're going to graduate, uh, no doubt, as one of the most decorated field hockey players in school history. What do those accolades mean to you, and do you feel like added pressure put on you because of them? Um, well, with the pressure, I think it puts some pressure on me. I just, you know, like, I just want to do as best, as good as I can. All right, Meg, we've got a couple for you now, too. I, I know your coaches very well, and I know they always stress different things at practice, depending on who you guys are going to be facing that week in games. What would you say has been the underlying theme of what the team has really been focusing on the most this year? Um, I think during practice, what we really try to focus on is our pressure and our stealing, because our big thing is if we go faster, we're going to beat our teams. Like If we go slow through the motions, like that's when we get, get down a little. So we really need to focus on working in pairs and working one pressures and one steals because then when we get that transition, we work a lot better and that's when we get our success going. So when Coach Dan says to you, steal and go, which yeah. is what he says all the time, <laughs> so what does that mean? <laughs> uh, so like your one person, like the forwards, is going to be pressuring the ball and they're not going to be the one picking up the ball. Their partner is going to be the one stealing the pass. So it's steal and go. It's like the quick transition. That's good to know because I've heard that for about 10 or 12 years now. never knew what it meant. Um, okay, so your second question I've got for you is, you played through some, some serious hip pain all of last season. We could see it on your face. You know, you still gave it your all out there on the field, but after it, you know, you were wrapped in ice all the time. You'd be limping through, going to the training room. What types of things did you need to do to rehabilitate that injury, and how has it impacted your play uh, this season, if at all? Uh, well, all summer I was here every day, you know, doing rehab. I needed to make sure that, like, everything on my body was strengthened, not just my left hip, like, all the muscles around it. But doing the rehab has really helped me. Like, I've I'm like actually very surprised where I am right now. Like I'm able to play, no matter how much pain I've done. Like I'm going to be getting through the season because it's my last year and I want to do it for my team. So, you know, all the work and the rehab is going to pay off. So just got to keep doing that. Good. Well, we've certainly seen that uh, out of you this year. So keep it up. All right, Tito. All right. Last year, you led the nation in goals against average. Obviously, a great accomplish uh, accomplishment that you should be very proud of. What types of things does, does Coach Dan, as the goalie coach, work on with you during practice um, that, that really helped you earn this award last year? Uh, well, for, for practice, typically, Coach Dan likes to work on uh, movement, like lateral movements, being aggressive to the ball. Uh, for four years, you know, he's told me, get your motor running, which means keep your feet alive. You know, as a goalkeeper, you need to always be ready. And I feel that that improved my game to a level where I could be ranked nationally. And it's helped me stop more balls than I could have, you know, with versus the dead foot, you know, not being able to move quickly to the ball. And uh, at practice, you know, he keeps it fun. Yesterday we had a uh, Coach Dan versus goalie tournament 
where we had to uh, we had to run. The goalies had to run around the cage, and he had to sprint up to the top of the circle and shoot a shot. And so he makes it competitive and he makes it fun. So we and learned a lot. Who won, Coach Dan or the goalies? I won. <laughs> I beat Coach Dan uh, twice. Okay, Just I hope for the so. But he's going to claim. You know, he's got a few years on you. I'm yeah, sure. for the record. Yeah. All right. Now this is one that I'm sure all of our fans want to know. I, I know I have been dying to know this, and I've thought this for years with, with our goalies. Obviously, rider teams are known because we score a lot. We control the ball offensively. The ball is always down at the other end of the field. So when you're sitting back there and you're in the goal and you're not getting a whole heck of a lot of play, what what are you thinking? What's going through your mind? Like, what do I think about during the game? Like, you yeah, know, like, you know, you haven't seen a ball come your way in the last 30 minutes, but, <laughs> you know, because your offense is so good and your defense is clearing it out all the time. I mean, I think we're, we're, we're right up there um, in, in – um, corners and everything else right. too so yeah well <laughs> everyone <laughs> people do tend to ask that question a lot and uh, I feel that now that I'm, I'm a senior in college you know my my thought process has changed uh, it was similar in high school where I wasn't facing many shots uh, I used to uh, make songs out of the plays that people were doing uh, but now you want to sing one of those uh, right no, no not particularly okay. uh, but now uh, I, at the collegiate level, it's more important to stay focused for the full 70 minutes, uh, which is very hard to do in the beginning as a goalkeeper. But I try to just keep talking to my defense. I try to think about, you know, worst case scenarios, what might happen. Uh, I try to keep myself tuned in to the ball. Occasionally, I think about, you know, what I did earlier that day. But it takes off the, a, off the field. Off the field, yeah. <laughs> but it takes, you know, it takes a lot of mental toughness to stay stationary and not do anything for 70 minutes. So you gotta fight through that. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, well Tosh, here we go with you. As, as a back, you're kind of part of the last line of defense before the ball actually gets to Tito. Um, and Rodgers obviously had some great defensive players um, over the years. Um, what do you think is the most important thing that you've learned about playing your position since you've been here at Ryder? Um, I mean, I didn't start playing out defense. So, I mean, it was kind of an adjustment for me to play defense this year. I think the most important thing I've learned just from watching all of our defenders is to go hard to the ball and make a lot of interceptions and hard plays and to never give up because we are the last line and if we give up then that leaves Tito kind of back there by herself thinking about whatever she's thinking about. <laughs> Sing her Sing songs. Her songs. Yeah, so, <laughs> so it's just really important that um, like we just never give up and just to you know really focus on that. And like you said, you know the you had to transition into defense, and, and the defense is relatively young this year. So now you've become one of the leaders of that, you know, part of the uh, of the team. What are some of the things that you've tried to instill on the younger players um, now that you're kind of in that role? Uh, I really try to, you know, get everyone to have heart when they play with defense, and we really try to work together as a unit. The defense, just because the stronger the unit is as a whole, the stronger it makes the defense and the midfield and the whole entire team because we're all just working together as one unit. So I just really try to put in the team and in everyone's head. So how are they adapting so far? Well, I think, I mean, our defense has been getting stronger every day and every game, so I think it's going really well. Good. All right, so you guys passed part one. Yes. <laughs> that, goes, that, that does it for my uh, field hockey-specific <laughs> question. So now what we're going to do with you is try to get to know each of you a little bit better um, let our fans know each of you a little bit better. So I'm going to turn it over to my co-host Jeff Jones, who has uh, <laughs> going to—he has some rapid-fire questions for you. So now you're really on the Bronx hot seat. So the, the key here is, you know, quick answers. So Jeff, take it away. All right, now we're going to get to the fun part right now. Going to ask the girls uh, two questions, uh, rapid-fire, one after another. The first is pretty easy, and the second one's a little, you know, testy. So get the fans a little something they don't know about the girls. So. First, we got Virginia. Uh, other than your family, what do you miss most about Spain? Um, the food and <laughs> hanging out with friends outside. <laughs> okay, second question. If you could have dinner with any two famous people, who would it be? Um, uh, that's a hard question. <laughs> 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 Tell me they would be easy. <laughs> hot seat, uh -oh. hot seat. Getting hot right here, Reed. Good, B. I would say Beyonce and her Beyonce. husband. 
Okay, I'll tell you, Jay-Z, you can answer. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. That was Virginia's questions. Next, we got Meg. Uh, what classes do you like the most and the least at Ryan? Name one. Okay, I'm going to be this class now. It's awesome. Yeah. But I, I'm a math major, and I honestly hate my math class. Right now. <laughs> Second question, if you were stranded on a desert island, you going to have like two things with you, what would it be? Thanks for watching and go Bronx. Woo! Woo! <laughs>